Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Bengal Magazine. And on the show today, the boss, the athletics director at Buffalo State, is coming aboard. That's Jerry Boys, and Jerry's going to be talking a little bit about facility upgrades uh, at the athletics department. And then men's basketball joins us, head coach Fadre Ansari, and Fadre is bringing along his outstanding senior from St. Joe's, and that's Jordan Glover. And then Kevin Clifford joins us to talk women's basketball and Princella McCulloch, his outstanding sophomore forward from Rochester, will be with us. We'll also have the Tim Hortons Athlete of the Week and, of course, Matt Schaefer's back with Bengal Update. So let's take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk with the boss, Jerry Boyce. Well, welcome back, everybody, and I'm uh, pleased to be joined by the boss of Buffalo State Athletics, the Athletics Director, Jerry Boys. Um, Jerry, welcome again. Uh, decided to have you on because there's some more exciting news in terms of facility upgrades, and uh, uh, thought thought it'd be best to have you on and talk about it. Let's let's first talk about Coyer Field, the uh, football, soccer, lacrosse stadium that we have, and things that are happening out there over the next couple of months. Well, the uh, we're adding lights to the field, uh, which is a, a great addition, uh, in particular because Corey Field is our, is our one outdoor field uh, yeah. right now. Uh, so it serves as a practice and game facility. So when you have four outdoor sports, they get stacked up, and that gets to be a challenge sure. uh, during uh, just the daylight hours. So adding lights uh, gives us more time for those teams to practice. It also adds to our intramural recreation sure. little programs that uh, uh, is very exciting for our, for our students. And the possibilities of rentals. Yeah, we uh, can make some money. As well, that, that <laughs> revenue, um, which, which will be uh, a great thing for us. So yeah. there's, uh, you know, that, that's the real positive side of adding lights to our facility. Uh, so uh, we hope we're going to be able to turn those lights on uh, this fall. That'd be great. Um, so we'll see see how that yep. goes, but that's a that's a very exciting addition to our uh, facilities. It really is, and then uh, then we go inside <laughs> to the sports arena, which is a fabulous facility by itself. Uh, and yeah, we're go there's going to be upgrades inside the sports arena. Yeah, why, we're why really, you talk very excited about that. About that. Uh, I'm, it's it's hard to believe that our our sports arena is over 25 Isn't years old. Isn't that something? Uh, yep. In a lot of ways, a great um, um, compliment to our facilities and maintenance people because you walk in there and it certainly doesn't look 25 years old. Correct. And yet, um, we have some, some wear and tear. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the bleachers and the basketball side mm -hmm. of, the, of the arena are going to be replaced. Mm -hmm. uh, and the indoor track, which is a very much a, a needed addition that's become a very compact, hard track. Yep. Uh, so for our own student athletes, they're looking forward to that. Um, but that also helps our Section 6 sure. uh, boys and girls high school track meets that will be coming in there. Um, so it, it, that's a, uh, and uh, I'm very uh, compliments to our, our campus of recognizing the need, the, the kind of the, even though it's 25 years, but the bleachers were old. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of wear and tear. To a point where the parts to need to be replaced, they don't make anymore. Right. <clears throat> so for them to respond <laughs> to the need of the, the bleachers and, and the track, uh, I just can't uh, tell, tell you how grateful I, I right. am for our, for our campus and our facilities planning to, to recognize that. You know, and this, you, you had talked about Section <clears> 6, and, and even though the facility is a good looking facility, these upgrades, I mean, that, that's got to help in the whole, in your football coach, in the whole process, what we call recruiting when parents and student athletes come and visit. Well, you, you like to think so, Tom. Yeah. <clears throat> With us hosting Section 6 basketball, uh, rentals coming on campus and exposing Buffalo State. Uh, our athletic facilities, but also the campus, uh, to these prospective uh, recruits, 
students at Buffalo State, uh, the parents come in and see those things. Um, when they have never seen those things before, they have a perception of our campus. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes that's not a favorable one. Sure. Uh, once they get here, they say, wow, this isn't what I thought. That's right. And that, that changes people's perceptions very, very quickly. Right. We've got about a minute and a half left, and uh, I'd, I'd be remiss in not asking you because, uh, yeah, you're the athletic director, but you're also the football coach. It's kind of an important time right now. You're undefeated, by the way, so congratulations on that. <laughs> but what, what's happening in February during Division Three college football? Oh, it's all recruiting. Is it? I'm um, everything right now. Uh, uh, you know, the, the staff has been out, uh, you know, back in December into all the high schools across New York State talking to prospective uh, seniors. Right. Um, watching them. Uh, sometimes in the, the state playoffs and things of that nature as well. So all of that recruiting has has kind of taken place. Now it's the second piece to that, and that's having those kids apply, mm -hmm. uh, coming on campus to, to visit, mm -hmm. uh, and getting a feel for Buffalo State. Mm -hmm. um, New York State is a Division three state. There you go. So in Lots order for us, uh, it's just the competition is just uh, tremendous. And, oh. and that's for all of our sports. That's right. So at Division Three, it's, it's a volume deal. Um, you know, our coaches, if, if we're recruiting you, Tom, we've got to talk to about 10 just like you because you may not come. That's right. So it's the next time. So you can't put all your eggs in, in one basket. You have to really volume recruit. Mm -hmm. And that's any of any sport in Division Three. Uh, any of our coaches, they know they, they have to that's right. Talk to talk to a number of either the, the women or, or the men out there, and and hopefully we get the the, the one we want. There you go. Well, I wish you the best of luck and uh, stay undefeated for the rest of the season. Yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't that be nice? Absolutely. Well, Jerry, thanks for being on. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to go talk basketball with Fadre Ansari. Stay with us. This winter, you deserve a great breakfast at a great price. Introducing Tim Horton's $1.49 breakfast sandwiches. Choose from the sausage biscuit, sausage and cheese English muffin, or new spicy sausage biscuit for just $1.49 at Tim Horton's. Well, we're sending congratulations out to Rachel Leonard of the women's hockey team. She is this week's uh, Tim Horton's Athlete of the Week. The junior education major scored three goals in a pair of games against her Former team, nationally ranked Oswego, uh, Rachel had both goals in a 2-1 victory on February 10th, including the game winner with less than five minutes remaining. And then she scored the Bengals' only goal in Saturday's loss to the Lakers. So uh, congratulations to Rachel Leonard uh, of the women's hockey team. And by the way, if you're looking for great entertainment, the women's hockey team is home this weekend uh, to take on Plattsburgh, which is the number one ranked team in the country. So great women's hockey this weekend at the Buffalo State Ice Arena. But we're going to go to the other side of the sports arena and talk basketball. And Fadre Ansari uh, joins us, the men's head coach here, along with Jordan Glover, his outstanding senior from St. Joe's, the Marauder. Um, and, Coach, we've got one game left in the regular season. Uh, we're going to assume the, the playoffs. I know you're not yet. But as you look at this game against Fredonia, and a lot has happened with this program, with this team. How do you look at that game? Do you look at that game in a preparation for the tournament, or is this just a let's get this W here and take care of matters? Yeah, we we try to approach every game as if it's your last game you know, because you can't you know, let up and and, um, and then get motivated for one game and not for another. You know, those things hurt us in the course of a game. So sure. we're trying to sustain the uh, the competitiveness, and we don't want to assume any other scenarios. We have to take care of business. Uh, and what we can take care of. We, yeah. can't, we can't handle anything else, but we yeah. can take care of our own business, so we need this game. When you look yeah. back on this on this team, as I have tried to, we were talking mm -hmm. off camera about this, you know, most teams have an identity. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, I look at this team, and I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what its mm -hmm. identity, and I'd be curious to know you guys, how you look at this team. Coach, how, what is the identity of this team? Has it been difficult to really kind of place one on it? Well, that's that's a fair question, and and I can easily see someone from the outside looking at that. Yeah. Um, and it's a good and a bad thing. You know, it's good because I don't think we fully evolved, although it's getting late in in, in February. 
but I still think we can reach the identity we want. We, we tend to be a more of a, a fast break and yep. uh, more fast paced team, but um, we always say, you know, be fast, but not in a hurry. There, oh, um, you you know, so when we get on the half court, we want to be able to execute a little better. And we, right. we show that in, in some stages and games and against some real good competition. Then other times we kind of lose that little discipline and we, right. and we hurry too much. And so, um, you know, we had to make a little, a few adjustments. Uh, you know, with personnel, we would play small ball for about six games without right. our, you our, our, our big centers. Mm -hmm. um, so now we're trying to get them to, to gel back in. And, um, and so I, I, we want to be a fast-paced team, but we want to be a little more uh, disciplined in the half court and um, consistent and, and more competitive on okay. the defense end. I see, I see Jordan kind of nodding his head yes. Mm -hmm. As you look back on this mm -hmm. season, uh, you agree with Coach? Describe this season as, as a team and, and where this team has come. Um, to me, it's been up and down here. Yeah. Uh, I feel like, you know, we've let some games get away that we should have won. Uh, one being this past weekend to Oswego. Right. Losing by one, lost to one by one twice this year. That's right. So it's just, you know, been Top up and down. Top ranked team in the, con in the conference, too, by exactly. the way. Exactly. Correct. So, you know, when we play, you know, we play, when we're down to Florida, we play two tough teams. Yep. We beat them pretty good down there. So it's just like, you know, when we come back home in conference, it's just like, it's some games that we think we should win, you know. Right. And, but that'd be let slip away. Now, he's got a little boot on his foot there from a sprained ankle, but everything's going to be fine, and I'm saying my prayers for that. But uh, talk about Jordan Glover a little bit this season. I'm looking at some numbers. Uh, he's giving you 33 minutes a game. Um, his assist to turnover ratio is 4-1. to one. You had told me that's number one in the conference. Yes. And he's also number one in steal. So, I mean, obviously I'm answering my own question from a coaching perspective. What do you get in a guy like this? Well, the leadership, he understands mm. far um, more um, than anyone else. Uh, he's been around the program, Holly, for, for most of his, his, his life. Uh, he knows the plays. You know, we <laughs> wanted to be a little more vocal. Uh, my seniors we have, they, they all committed, but they tend not to be as vocal as we would like. Um, right. they, they all would rather just show you rather than tell you. But on the court, when they can't hear you, especially uh, when we, we point out, um, yesterday was pointed out in practice, when you're on the – opposite end the second half on the defense end they can't hear you so we need to be more vocal on, on the defense Very end. good first half they can, we're there right in the ear and they're concentrating and um, we tend to have better first halves in terms of scoring and mm -hmm. defense so uh, that's where the leadership is so we we hoping everything is good for him because it's, it's difficult and then when we need poise you know we lost him last wheel game we lost by one but he didn't play the last over five minutes of the game because okay. because of the injury and, and we would like to think that the leadership and the poise could have uh, helped us make a couple of plays or a couple of miscues right. that we, did, we um, had. Your career's closing up after four years. Uh, when you look back, how do you, how do you look upon your career here at Buffalo State? Uh, it's been fun. It's yeah. been exciting. It's been some downtime, some, you know, some times where it's been too much fun at times. But, you know, it's, <laughs> uh, it's been great playing for Coach. Like you said, I've been here for... Was it been 13? Yeah. I think even 13 years now. Your Playing father coaches as an assistant. We My should tell everybody here. that, right? So, it's just, you know, it's been fun. <laughs> um, I, know, I know all of the coaching staff, so, you know, it's, it's been great. Right. I, would, you right. Know, I wouldn't change it for anything. What are you going to miss most about him when he, when he leaves? Because he's a great kid, uh, great representation for the program and the department and the college. What, what are you going to miss most when, when Jordan's not well, it's around? It's really hard to say in words. It's probably kind of like, you know, a family member um, and <laughs> you realize they're no longer in the house. There you and, go. And then you're kind of looking for him in the room or talking to him, you know. So that's, you know, ever since I've been a coach here, I don't know what it is with him not being around. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's really hard to, hard to describe that. But it's going to be hard to replace. Um, and, you know, we look for people like that all the time, um, but it's, it's not easy. It's not. Absolutely not. We've got about a minute and a half left. And I do want to talk about the conference tournament and how it relates to Buffalo State. Because, you know, I look at this conference, and you, you told me off camera, seventh or eighth ranked conference in the nation. You know, number, Oswego's number one at 14-2, and two, and yet Buffalo State lost to Oswego twice by one point. Brockport, 13-3, and three, and yet Buffalo State lost by one point. Cortland 11 and 5, and yet you beat Cortland. Oneana 11 and 5, and yet you beat Oneana. Wow. I, I mean, this. Tell me about this this tournament, this conference. It just seems absolutely like it's anybody's tournament. 
It's a lot of parity. Um, there's, there's certainly good players on all the team, uh, excellent coaches. Yep. And they're very familiar with one another. We're all familiar with one another and we look at the style. So, and, you know, at the end of the day, you have to be on and um, you have to make shots. You yep. know, with all the strategy, you have to be able to, you know, score more points than they do at the end of the end of the right. day. Um, the defense is also um, crucial and, and consistency. Right. And then you hope um, the injury bug don't get you, you yeah. know. So those are the things that has to be, you have to have that leadership, a good point guard, mm -hmm. a good big man. And all those teams you mentioned have that, you know, a good go-to player or scorer. Right. They got a couple of good season players. So, you know, it's a matter of who wants it more, who's going to be on, and, um, and and willing yourself, you know, there you go. if you will yourself to, to do it, um, I think most of the teams would do well um, in the tournament. You know, yep. the NCAA, we was fortunate to get three teams right. um, uh, picked the last year. Yep. Um, you know, the whole struggle is just getting out of the, the, right. the SUNYAC. That's right. Well, guys, we wish you the best of luck. Saturday, Fredonia home, 3 o'clock, I believe the tip-off is. That's been changed. And Jordan, on behalf of everybody here in the department, thank you for four great years. We appreciate it. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more hoops. Kevin Clifford from Women's Basketball Gym. This winter, you deserve a great breakfast at a great price. Introducing Tim Horton's $1.49 breakfast sandwiches. Choose from the sausage biscuit, sausage and cheese English muffin, or new spicy sausage biscuit for just $1.49 at Tim Horton's. Hello everyone and welcome to Bangle Update. I'm Matthew Schaefer with a recap of news, scores, and a look at upcoming events surrounding Buffalo State Athletics. As we reach the middle of February, Buffalo State winter sports are preparing for postseason action. Men's and women's swimming and diving is competing at the SUNYAC Championships February 15th through the 18th. Men's and women's hockey already clinched postseason berths, and men's basketball isn't far behind and can clinch a postseason appearance this weekend. Both swimming and diving teams are at the Flickinger Aquatic Center at Erie Community College this Wednesday through Saturday for the conference championships. The Bengals are led by preseason All-American Connor Mergler, who won three individual titles at last year's event. The junior business administration major won the championship's male outstanding swimmer of the meet with his record-setting winning performances in the 50, 100, and 200 free. The Buffalo State men are looking to improve on a seventh place finish in last year's meet, while the women are looking to move up from eighth. Fans can follow all of the action, including a live stream of the meet, off of SUNYACsports.com. Men's hockey enters the weekend as the number 13 team in the country and currently sits fourth in the SUNYAC. The Bengals travel to Cortland and Oswego Friday and Saturday to close out its regular season. Buffalo State is looking to keep a hold on its fourth place conference standing, which would give the Bengals a home playoff game on Wednesday, February 22nd. It is the seventh consecutive season that the Bengals have advanced to the postseason, including five straight appearances in the SUNYAC semifinals. Women's hockey is third in the ECAC West and will look to hang on to one of the top four seeds so it too can host a home playoff game on Thursday, February 23rd. The Bengals host the number one team in the nation, Plattsburgh, this Friday and Saturday at the Buffalo State Sports Arena. Buffalo State can fall no lower than fifth in the standings and a single win this weekend will clinch the team a top four finish. The Bengals have now qualified for the playoffs in four straight seasons. Men's basketball sits in fifth place in the conference and can clinch a postseason berth this weekend with a win and or some outside help from the rest of the conference. The Bengals are home at the sports arena this Saturday against Veronia with a tip-off of 3 p.m. Buffalo State controls its own destiny with a win against the Blue Devils, sending them to the playoffs for the third consecutive season. The Bengals can also advance with a loss by Plattsburgh or two losses by Geneseo. Links to watch all hockey and basketball games this weekend can be found on buffalostateathletics.com. And speaking of the playoffs, the women's soccer team was honored with the unveiling of the SUNYAC Championship and NCAA playoff banners at the sports arena this past Friday during halftime of the men's basketball games. Buffalo State set a school record with 17 wins and made program history during the 2016 season, winning its first SUNYAC title and advancing to the NCAA tournament for the first time. The Bengals finished the year 17-1-3 overall and were ranked 21st in the final NCAA National Poll. For Bengal Update, I'm Matthew Schaefer. Let's send it back to Tom Kohler in the studio. Well, thanks, Matt, for Bengal Update. Appreciate that. And we're going to talk a little more hoops now. And Kevin Clifford, the head coach of the women's program, bringing along Princella 
McCulloch from Rochester. Yes. Hello, Prince Ella. Thanks Hello. for being on there. She might be a little nervous, but she looks <laughs> fine right now. Uh, Coach, I know it's, you know, not quite the kind of season you're, you're hoping for, but you know, I got to tell you, I, uh, it's an easy excuse, but it's a good excuse, I think, and it's a valid one. Boy, you got the injury bug bit, and it bit hard. I mean, there were, there were a couple games where you're talking six or seven student athletes suited up. So, I mean, that's, <laughs> That's got to play a big role in, in in how you coach and how this team operates, too. Yeah, unfortunately, we had a lot of adversity, a lot of challenges this year. Yeah. Um, a lot of key players went down, but everybody's important. You know, practice right. players, role players. Uh, but I'm really proud of the group that's out there. They're resilient. They've been battling. They've been motivated each day coming to practice, especially with Priscilla. Sure. So I'm really proud of them just, you know, not giving up and not quitting. Um, so just battling with seven people, eight people is tough. And we had changed some of our schemes and yeah. What like was that, that like for you? I mean, not to interrupt you, but I mean, the whole philosophy out there and schemes, et cetera, has to change. Yeah, we just had to adjust and just try to keep it a little more simple and just <laughs> um, and, and just try and keep people fresh. So our subbing patterns have have changed and our starting rotations have been different pretty much every other game. Okay, so depending on matchups and things like that. So. Right. Uh, so it has been a challenge, but we've been kind of taking it one day at a time. And But the players have stepped up, and we, we've really battled. We had a nice win on Saturday. So Absolutely, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, you have one game left, uh, and with this type of team, how do, you, how do you approach that game? Is there any looking ahead in terms of maybe rotations, et cetera, as you look toward the offseason and into next season? No, we're just playing. Um, playing you know, to win. Yeah, build, building off, off Saturday's yep. win. Uh, Fredonia is a big rival, uh, battled by the lake, obviously. That's right. So this this game is everything for us. Uh, I haven't beat them since I've been here, or we haven't beat them since I've been here. So um, it, it, it is a rival, and they're a good team, and they beat us pretty good last time. So right. I, we, we, we're having a good week of practice so far, and we'll be ready to go on Saturday. Great. Princella, um I look at your statistics and I'm like, wow, this this is this is fantastic. This is a sophomore uh, right now, and I mean, you're you're averaging 11 points, 11 rebounds, a couple blocks a game, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, tell me, how did you approach this season? Was this the type of season you were looking for? Or what was your thought process in the beginning of the year? Well, individually, it was the type of season I was looking for, but right. as a team, it wasn't, and I think that's what matters the most. So, in my eyes, I can always do better. She can do better, obviously, and yet when I look at those numbers, I, I, I don't know how much more you could ask of her. Give me your thought process on how she's developed this season. She's a special player. Yeah, uh, She's been great for us. We have two more years to develop her. Yeah. She's improved a lot since, um, since the beginning of the year. She's working hard. She's in the gym, you know, shooting extra free throws and working on her game. Mm -hmm. uh, she really wants to get better. I think she's hard on herself, too, which is a good thing. Um, could be a bad thing at times. Confidence is the key. Uh, we have a lot of confidence in her. She's okay. 34th in the nation in rebounding. Wow. She's number one in rebounding in Suniac. She has 10 double doubles. So she's, there you go. she's doing a lot for us. She also does other things too, talking on defense, five blocks on Saturday. She hit the game winner with a left she hand did. On, on Saturday. So a, a, lot, a lot of things that may, might not show up in the stat sheet, you know, battling the post down low, getting mm -hmm. a lot of rebounds for us. So she does a lot for us. Well, let's talk about that Oswego game. Uh, you beat the Laker uh, with a couple seconds left on a left handed layup. Um, how did that whole game transpire for you? Was it the type of game you're looking for, 11 points, 14 rebounds? Yeah, that was more of a defensive game to me because in, yeah. in the first half, my shot wasn't falling at all. So I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to help the team on defense, help the team on defense. But at the end, I think it was like nine seconds left. Everybody's like, give the ball to Prince, give the ball to Prince. <laughs> I'm like, oh, gosh, I don't want it. But they believed in me, so I was like, I can do it. You know, and a left-handed layup is, I mean, we, we say it casually, but – it's not easily done. So, I mean, are you thinking when you're going up, got to use my left hand, or yes. would you prefer to use the right hand? How did, how did that thought process work When I went out? up, I was on the left side, so I knew if I was trying to put it on my <laughs> right, it wasn't going to go in. So That's right. I just took it. That's right. Tell us about, about the team in general. I look at this team and I see, wow, they're, the Cortland game. I mean, lost the game, and yet here's one of the best teams in the conference. You're right there at halftime, down up by two. And then, for whatever reason, the mojo doesn't seem to always be there at, you know, in the second half. Do you see that too, or, or how do you how do you see this team and its identity? 
sometimes. I think there's two good quarters and then two bad quarters. Okay. So it could be different quarters. We haven't really pinpointed uh, what it is. So, uh, so we'll play well for a few minutes, and then the other team will make a run, and then okay. we'll try to call a timeout maybe, and then. You know, and then it depends on how the game is going. So, play really well against Coral in the first half. The one player hurt us, and I probably should have done a better job in making some adjustments. Uh, but they have all the players that, you know, three other players that had double, yeah. double digits. So, um, so, th so that was a tough game, but I'm really proud of the way they follow the game plan. They go into the game plan trying to follow it. Uh, and we are competitive, and then there is a stretch. Maybe it's fatigue, um, maybe it's foul trouble. Right. Um, so, so it's not one reason. Right. I think it's a couple of different factors. But we do go through a stretch where you know it's a little run, and it could go from two points to 14 points sure. in a hurry. Right. And that that could be leadership. That could be depth. That could be you know, a lot. Of, we're playing good teams. Absolutely. You know, so I, I think it has a lot of factors. Um, Prince has been great. Um, she's going to be a leader down the road. She does a lot of things now that, that, that leads for us. Right. Uh, that play on Saturday was a high-low play for her, and she's been working on her left hand and up and unders and things there you like go. that. So, um, so I, th I think we just got to keep competing, and we got to play for two hours. We got to play for 40 minutes. There you go. Well, there's a lot to look forward to down the road, especially this Saturday, Battle of the, Battle of the Lake with Fredonia. So I wish you the best of luck on the uh, regular season final. Well, well that's going to wrap it up for uh, this edition of Bango Magazine. Thanks to everybody here in Wright. And we'll see you again in two weeks for more Bango Magazine.